The Sith Order, particularly during the era after Darth Bane, was obsessed with immortality. Darth Plagueis was no different, but his experiments brought him closer than any other Sith before him. Now, Darth Plagueis' real name was Higo Damask. He was born in Maegido, where his father, Car Damask, was a middle-ranking agent of the banking clan. Darth Tenebris, the Sith Lord that would become Higo's master, actually engineered him in a way. Now, Tenebris actually met Higo's father, Car, who was Force-sensitive. He also met another female Mune who was force sensitive and he convinced her to seduce Carr who was already married and to bear a child that would be much stronger in the force. That child would be Higo Damask and later known as Darth Plagueis. Plagueis' father rose to the head of the banking clan but he fell ill at an early age, at least an early age for Munes, due to a rare defect in one of his three hearts. His father had passed this defect on to his other children but Plagueis wasn't affected since he had a different mother. When they all died, he inherited the family fortune. The Plagueis killed his master in a brutal and somewhat terrifying fate. On the planet Baldemnik, they were searching a Cortosis deposit when a gas explosion caught them, and Tenebris had to use the force to protect them from a fireball. Plagueis saw this opportunity and brought the roof of the cave down onto Tenebris and himself. Tenebris, as he's laying there dying, passes the title of Darth to Plagueis, and then Plagueis just snaps his neck. Plagueis then reached out with the force to study his master's dying midichlorians. As Tenebris dies, he's using the force to access Plagueis' ability of foresight. It was this back and forth struggle that was pretty amazing. What he saw inside Plagueis was the death of his apprentice by someone he only saw as the shadow. Now, because Tenebris accessed Plagueis' powers, two things happened. One, Plagueis lost his power of foresight. And two, because Tenebris, when he retreated out of the mind of Plagueis, he was trapped as a disembodied essence inside that cave for eternity. Now, Plagueis believed the key to immortality would be discovered through science. His research, which most would consider unnatural, explored his ability to manipulate midichlorians, the life force that made up the cells of every living organism. Plagueis believed that the midichlorians shared a connection to all aspects of the force, so if he could manipulate them, he could control both life and death. His biggest area of study was the application of essence transfer. This was discovered originally by the immortal god king of Prakith, Darth and Dedu, who lived for centuries. In 1000 BBY, Darth Bane attempted to transfer his essence into his apprentice Xana in their final battle on Ambria. Now, it's still unknown whether he actually accomplished this or not. Plagueis met a 17-year-old Palpatine who he saw as holding huge promise as a future politician who was ambitious and extremely intelligent. His goal was to bring the entire galaxy under the rule of Sith and would make the perfect Supreme Chancellor to help him accomplish his goals. He was able to convince Palpatine, who already hated his father, to kill him and free himself and to reveal his true nature. He then named Palpatine Darth Sidious due to his nature as being arrogant, ambitious and insidious. Around 52 BBY, Plagueis actually met with the Kaminoans to discuss the possibility of creating a clone army. He later met with Jedi Masters Dooku, Qui-Gon Jinn, Jocasta Nu, and Sifo Dyas on Sereno. He noticed that Dooku was disillusioned with the Galactic Senate and eventually introduced him and Sifo Dyas to Palpatine. Dooku was actually a potential candidate to replace Palpatine if he had ever fallen. Plagueis was nearly killed by Malay assassins using decapitator discs but was actually saved by Palpatine. But during the assassination attempt, he lost a considerable part of his lower face and jaw from one of the decapitator discs as well as having his trachea severed. He had to wear a respirator type device just to breathe. It was here that Plagueis finally revealed to Palpatine the true nature of his science experiments with midichlorians and controlling life and death. He spent the next 20 years in his laboratory devoting himself to his studies, while Palpatine devoted himself to politics and carrying out the grand plan to take over the Republic and destroy the Jedi. Plagueis discovered that Tenebris actually had another apprentice, a Bith named Darth Venomous. He was attacked by Venomous, who wielded a crimson lightsaber in a wooded area, and Plagueis originally thought it was his resurrected master Tenebris. Now Plagueis was easily able to defeat him and Venomous then became his servant. He later killed Venomous as an experiment. He resurrected him, then killed him again several times until his organs finally gave out and he died for good. Around 40 BBY, 
Plagueis and Sidious entered a meditative state, mentally reaching out through the Force in an attempt to create life and to will a being of their own design into creation. They poured their malicious intent into the waves of the Force to countless midichlorians throughout the galaxy. Now, nothing happened at first, but then the beings that were a part of Plagueis' experiments started to become diseased or die. Now, what he theorized was that the Force actively opposed their efforts. It was at this time that Anakin Skywalker was born, the Chosen One. Now, Plagueis believed that the Force had struck back in retaliation for their attempts at manipulation. Now, Plagueis sought out Anakin on Coruscant, but initially missed him just leaving for the Jedi Temple. He eventually caught a glimpse of him where he had a vision of a cyborg clad in dark armor and a dark helmet, confirming his fears that Anakin would change the course of history. Because of his fear of Anakin, Plagueis ordered Sidious to have Maul kill Qui-Gon to try and prevent his vision from becoming a reality. Sidious, also knowing the potential of Obi-Wan, ordered Maul to kill him as well. As the grand plan to take over the galaxy was coming to fruition, Palpatine was on the verge of being elected as Supreme Chancellor. The night before, Plagueis was with Palpatine in his penthouse suite, practicing his acceptance speech. As he rehearsed and rehearsed the speech over and over, Plagueis drank in celebration. Eventually, Plagueis grew tired and wanted to go to sleep for the night, but Sidious, instead, he continued until the speech was perfect. He forced Plagueis to continue drinking as he listened to him practice. Eventually, he was so intoxicated that he started to pass out. As he lay there sleeping, Sidious, using force lightning, and because of the intoxication, he couldn't fight back. The lightning destroyed the breathing device that Plagueis needed to breathe, and he began to suffocate as Sidious taunted him. He died there in Palpatine's suite, unable to save himself. Now click here to see a list of all the Sith Masters from Darth Bane all the way to Darth Sidious. Thank you so much for watching, and may the Force be with you.